Yeah, my name is Shane Barker. I'm a, a professor at UCLA and also a digital strategist. I think in 2020 there's going to be, uh, the four things that I went over today are going to be the voice technology, obviously. There's going to be AI and machine learning. Um, the other side of it is going to be like any kind of a, a chatbot type technology as well. Um, we're also going to see there's going to be uh, voice, I think voice activation, right? When it comes to Alexa, when it comes to voice search, um, is going to be a big technology. Um, obviously, mobile is continuously evolving, especially when it comes to search online. Um, and then really influencer marketing is going to be another big play. Um, I, mean, I think it's evolved over the last probably five or six years, and that will continuously evolve, but I think it's going to be, um, it's, going to, it's only going to probably ten times, uh, ten, go tenfold here in the next probably few years. Yeah, I think the, the key is that's the hardest part is finding the right influencers. And I think what their uh, common misconception is that if you go work with one influencer and it doesn't work, then influencer marketing doesn't work. And that's not true. There's plenty of platforms. There's, you know, I mean, there's TikTok, there's Instagram, there's YouTube, there's bloggers, there's vloggers, there's YouTube, and there's so many different platforms, different things you can put content out on. I think what's important is that, you know, influencer marketing is no different than PPC or SEO. What you need to do is you need to go find an influencer, go hire 10 influencers on different platforms, try to put a, you know, put a strategy together, see which one really moves the needle and drives sales if that's your, your goal, then what you need to do is go find influencers that are like that influencer that just moved the needle for you. So, you know, influencer marketing, the common misconception is that you go hire somebody with a large following and that there's automatically a post once and you're going to go and count all kinds of money and, you know, retire and go off to some private island or something. You know, it, it's really not that way. It really comes down to it needs to be one piece in your tool set, but it's not just the only thing you should be doing and really you have to try it over and over and over until you find that perfect mix. Well, they have to think about what kind of product do they have, right? So if you're a brand new product and you're just coming to market, then, you know, and you're a brand new, like you're disrupting technology, then you're really going to probably be best on YouTube or an Instagram, right? Something where you can, if I just send you a picture of something, you go, okay, that's awesome, but what is it, right? So maybe there's a little bit more of an explanation that's needed behind that. That's where YouTube could come in, where you're doing a, a video explanation, or you're doing an unboxing, or you're doing something like that. So you have to really have to look at your product and figure out, or service, and figure out, like, really my core audience, like, where are they going to be? At and what kind of content do I need to produce for them to, to be able to you know, engage with the audience or engage with the brand? And with the influencer side of things, it's important. I think one of the things, like I said earlier, is that, that common misconception is, hey, let's find somebody with a large following. You really need to take a look at an influencer and, and not follower count needs to be one of the variables, but not the number one variable. You really need to look at their actual audience and the type of content they're currently promoting. Um, do you like the content that they're putting out? Is it going to fit with your brand? Is there you know, a, a brand like affinity there? If there isn't, then obviously you don't need to work with that influencer. You need to find the influencers that would tie into your brand. And then also, I think it's really important, a lot of brands don't do this, is interview the influencer. You're really going to be, you know, it's, it's a situation where I kind of, the analogy I use is dating, right? Like, I wouldn't just start dating somebody unless I talked to them first. It's, it's the same deal. Like, you really want to start up that relationship and find out what are their goals and make sure they align with the company. And if they're looking at longer term partnerships, there's a lot of variables you have to look at to make sure you're partnering with the right influencers. I mean, this place is awesome. Yeah, I mean, you're talking about the, that event out there. I mean, it's like, you got to be kidding me. I mean, this is, I speak all over the world, and this is probably one of the better events that I've been to in regards to just hospitality, the people, the food, everything about it. I mean, it just doesn't get any better than this.